recording on this computer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Uh, today, Pastor Alfie spoke to us about a very, very specific topic and very interesting because we all into the end time trying to preach the word of God and uh, we get hurt. Uh, we get uh, wounded and we get bite by, uh, and he, he was sharing from that and give not watch which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. This they trample them under their feet and turn again and render you. So here is, uh, you're trying to do something good and the end of it, it turn against you and, and they want to treat you to tear you. But the thing is, um, yeah, like uh, Pastor Alfie described them, uh, sharing the word of God is pearl. It's the most precious thing that you can ever have. And, and most of the time when we have pearls or we have uh, jewelry, whatever, you wanna not to share them. We wanna keep them to ourselves, to our children. Uh, but, but when it comes to the word of God, we treasure it in our heart. Like you cannot keep it in your heart. You want to share it because it's so beautiful. And by sharing it, you know, you feel like the, the beauty and the, that pearl is more even seen by others. Like when God reveals something, I want to quickly go to my husband and said, they said, oh, you want to train on me? I said, no, no. It's just like I want to share the beauty that I found into the word of God which is the most precious thing, you know, is Jesus in a form uh, of the word of God. So when you come and trying to explain um, things to people, Pastor Alfie, we had that teaching the other day, and I was putting this picture, if you like it, take a photo of it, and um, and, and I was trying to put the, the, the face, the Christian face in more photos as much as we can. Sorry, computer is playing. Uh, as the creed, like we do for our, uh, um, we believe in one God, the, 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 the Trinity, then uh, Jesus, the Son, the resurrection, the death, the baptism, and so on. And I was preaching this, and I was seeing the problem of the church, that none of the church have the full picture. Of course, we can add more of the reality into this, but I was trying in one thing to put as much as I can of what we really believe. Problem is everyone see one face or one part of the face and the other side, they don't see it. And because of that, uh, they create denomination and every denomination have the pride to think they are the one walking in the truth and none know it as they do. Uh, because of people fighting for you know glory and who gonna be the leader. I mean, like uh, when the reform came or the pro Protestant movement came to show us some of the things that the Catholic and church was doing, you know, selling the, it was not to be demolished. This is what they did. They break everything which is holy and all the sacraments and, and left us with none. And, and they try to make everything opposing to what they believe. If they were correct, what was wrong and add to it will be the beauty. So every movement come after the church. And, and then here, uh, as I preached the other day that the church of Jesus Christ you know, of the end time None of them was um, really not rebuked by the Lord. The, the book of Revelation, the seven churches, everyone has very good part in it. But the Lord said, but you have to fix this part in you. All of us, all the churches, not even one. So I was just trying to put all I believe in picture. And God showed me how uh, we have, if you really into your denomination and believing and preaching against you, missing one part of the side of the pearl, uh, and I was, uh, my sister showed me the other day the crown of the queen, how pearls are into the crown. And the beauty is that this is all the, the, the topics or all the things that we believe in are into those, every, one, every part of the truth here is part in the crown of the Christian faith. Problem is if you have only one pearl missing, People will leave everything and keep focusing on that part. So that's what we really do. We do not open to see what is the truth, which is good on the other side and, and leaving uh, the best of our face be taught by churches who are corrupted or um, pervert. So I don't wanna go into this, but I wanna focus on what Pastor Alfie uh, said, which uh, problem is, um, 
Jesus said that because he don't want us to be hurted. <laughs> it's not for us not to do it because we have to follow our master and he was hurted the most. He was crucified on the cross and this is the horrible way of uh, living. But at least some people are unredeemable. I don't know how to give a good uh, English word for it. They're not to be redeemed. And Pastor Alfie was putting, you know, the description of this here. Uh, be aware of the dog, beware of the evil workers, be aware of the concision. These are people are like children of Satan, children of evil. And Jesus was telling them, you are like your father. Uh, so these are people, they're not after the truth. Every, every meeting Jesus was doing, they were running after him. Is this because they wanted to hear and, and the beauty of the word of God preached by the master, the creator, God? Their Messiah, no. They just want to be there to find something to attack him with. Like they are attacking dogs like uh, Pastor uh, Alfie showed that part. So it was there. They were in every meeting. They didn't miss, the, the, uh, miss one of his meeting. Everywhere he go into desert, they are after him because they want to devour him and destroy him because they are already, they are the, the workers of evil, the children of uh, Satan. And, and for us into the, the uh, ministry, if you think you should be asked for a discernment because those people can really hurt you. They can really hurt you if you're not really recognized. So you preach the word. Do you have a choice not to preach? No, we don't have a, 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 a choice. The word of God say, preach the word, right? In season and out season. <laughs> So now you are into dinner, whatever, and it's not really appropriate. Don't talk about religion or politics, you know, that's what. So what you're going to talk about the weather and after the weather, what is it? Start to uh, whinge about the government. What is the communication that we say to each other? Nothingness is very, very horrible. But the word of God say, um, preach the word in, in season, out of season, Rebo uh, reprove, rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So here is the problem, like uh, when you preach the truth, you offend people. You, you uh, uh, reveal something that the Protestants are not doing, they get hurt and they feel like it's a personal insult. You say something that the Catholic are not doing, they feel like hurt and they think you offended them personally. Uh, you say against the, the Catholic, against any uh, whatever, and it's not like you want to set yourself against all people. You want to speak the truth, reprove, rebuke. No, 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 what you're doing is not right. And exhort. So we have really to speak the word of God and have the courage to, to get what is coming after that because there is suffering that Jesus suffered. And we have to, um, here is a beautiful picture. Uh, they say, stop watering down the word of God to make folk feel good. It means like you have a very concentrated syrup and you start to add water to it and it's just like get diluted, diluted. So it doesn't really, it loses the taste of it because you don't want them to come in the end and not shake hands with you and say, well done or well said. They're gonna get offended, get uh, upset because of what you said and they don't want to. Don't do that. Why is that he is saying here? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. People don't want you to tell them the truth because probably they know the truth, but they don't want to follow it. So don't keep telling them da, da, da all the time. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. They want people to come and just like, you know, like tingle their ears and, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and they shall be turned into fables, stories. Like I'm gonna tell you children's story. It's exciting, as good as the Bible. No, the, the word of the Bible, it has life in it. When you speak any story of the Bible, it's not like the children's book of stories. It has life of God in every word you say. And it hurts you. It's, you we have been taught here to rebuke or to reprove or to exhort. Sometimes there's many preachers around the world that their function is to be uh, encouragers. And, and, and you love them when you are into a place of pain or you're down, whatever, just turn to certain name. They will encourage you, encourage you, encourage you all the time. 
and they have bigger church probably because they encourage people and they don't want them to be stuck into a position. But you know, you encourage them. Problem is you're preparing uh, a church which is not gonna be with the Lord into, into the end when he say the 10, five and five, five enter and of the version and the other five didn't enter. And for me, I can see that very clear. I'm not here to prepare people for the 10 who are gonna make it to the door but they will not enter. Well, those encouragers are good when you're down, when you something bad happened to you at work, whatever, turn to them and they're gonna pump you to set you again. But you just have to go for the meat of the word and listen to it. Now here is um, the preach the word in season and out of season. Um, there is a great commission that is given to us, all of us. We think sometimes it's, uh, the pastor or the priest, whatever is his responsibility, but it's not true. Uh, it's, it's given to all of us because here um, it's in the, the last par paragraph of Matthew and of Mark on the same time. You can read it, but for the sake of the time, here we're taking that one on red. Matthew said, go you therefore and teach all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all, always, even unto the end of the world, amen. So this is the last word that Jesus said goodbye to his friends or his disciples, to observe all things that I taught you and teaching them this. But then you say, oh, this is probably the priest or the deacon or the preacher evangelist. I am not, I'm just a student. I'm just a mother at home, I'm just, no, that's not for me. Well, all of us want to say that. Problem is, Mark put it in another format, very painful. He said, and Jesus said to them, go you unto the world and preach the gospel to all creature. Uh, uh, he that believe and, and is baptized is saved, and the one who do not believe will be then. And what he said after, this son shed all that believe. So if you call yourself believer, this son or that work should follow you. And if they don't follow you those things, then you probably have to test yourself if you're a believer or you think you are. Uh, and, and casting out demons, speaking in new tongues, taking serpents, drinking anything poisonous, healing the sick so they recover. And, and all those things are to follow you if you're a believer. So he put that mandate or this great commission on everyone who call himself Christian. And then um, uh, you will see what is happening, that last one. And they went forth, preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with sign and fo following. So if you want to see sign and wonders into your life, go and start preaching the gospel. Uh, uh, yesterday, Pastor Alfie can tell you, you know, people were coming, uh, young women just come to ask us for healing and, and, and share their pain and hurts. And, and what they expect from God that they couldn't have. Where are you gonna find something like this if we don't start preaching the gospel? You know, and it was an advantage for us to, to feel the pain that they have and, and take them in our heart and pray for them later. And we see the miracle happening. So if you wanna see miracle and healing, go preach the word. There is a cross in preaching the word and the um, uh, spirit of offense is the spirit who gonna attack people into the end time by uh, you know, we all want to um, go there and just whatever, and then they sometimes hit us, sometimes they do this and that, and even our friends can turn against whatever, and you just want to get the pity party for yourself and sit in the room and start to pray and cry and whatever. Uh, if you want to do that, that's not what God, that's why he's saying to you, don't, you have to be wise enough to stop in a place where are those people unredeemable then don't continue, preach the gospel. And I'm one of the people who are very pushy. I try, I try again and pray again and, and again with the person until you feel <sighs> enough, you know, like really. And I don't give up because Lord didn't give up on me. So I, I push until, yeah, well, that's it. Now it's in your, uh, that day will judge you for the rest of your eternity. There was someone who was really trying to push on you the word of God and you push it away. And, and I get stopped by sometimes and, and, and sometimes hurt or whatever. But then you come and, um, and think of what happened to Jesus. Uh, you know, when last week, uh, I think was with you when we preached 
that the Lord, the Father was uh, uh, happy to crush him, was delighted to crush the Lord for you. So there was not something that you do for your child ever, ever. Your child is more valuable than your soul or your spirit or your eternity. Your child is something very, very valuable. So the father did that. He was happy to crush Jesus for you and me. So there is a pray for a price for the cross. Let's say now that you have the word of God and you are upset with him because something happened into your life. Uh, some dear one who passed before uh, that you still think that they should be with you or an exam you didn't pass it well or uh, work that you didn't get reward or no. A lot of reason that we can blame the girl last time she's thinking she had a curse on her and God is not rewarding her with all the, the work, hard work that she was doing for the Lord and for her family. But it's, you know, and, and she was in a, in a better place of faith than now. But here is the thing that um, Jeremiah, he was uh, co called by the Lord very young as a child, even as a boy, if you read the beginning of Jeremiah. But then he was some, somehow hurting from people or whatever, and he decided, no more. I'm not going to put uh, my pearl in front of the swine. They bite me, they, bite, they hurt me, they, no. And then I said, I will not make mention of him. Him is God, is Yahweh. I'm not going to speak of him anymore, nor speak anymore of his name. Many of us come to that place time and time again. Especially when we put into the hand of God a good prayer request and it's not granted. Especially when you pray for healing or salvation for a loved one. And you say, why Lord, why you allowed that? And you come into real brokenness in front of the Lord and say, no. Nah, you're not good God, I'm leaving. All of us have been, or I'm not gonna say all of us, but many of us go into their path when they walk with God with that um, point who can be a turning point for your face, leaving you. So that's a place here when Jeremiah was there, but his word was easy in his heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones, you give him arthritis. He can't sleep from the pain within his bone. I was weary of holding back and I could not. I tried to not speak about you, Lord. I tried my best not to speak about you. I couldn't. His word was in my heart like a burning fire. Burning fire. I was just in this situation this week. This week, you know, I just said, no more. Done, Lord. I'm done. I'm done. I did my part, my share. Maybe you want me to do other things. Maybe. Add more responsibility, but not deduct. I don't know. But here is the point when you feel like you're offended and you want to invite yourself to that pity party. His word in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bone. This is when you did. he's on his knee, his heart is burning and he's talking to God. And, and this hurt come from someone that you loved him, someone that you want his best. You, you share your heart or you pull your heart for their uh, good things, and they take your words, they hate it, they twist it, and they push you away. That's the situation was Jeremiah in. I'm not gonna go and continue doing this. It's the same thing. His word was in as my heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bone. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not hold back, I can't. So the, the, the man of God is, want to quit will the lord allow him the betrayal is a sign of the time jesus uh, you know prophesy about it jesus on the uh, on the last supper what did he say he said truly i say unto you the one who will betray me is with me on the table i will give him He's eating with me. I'm gonna dip, the one who dip in my plate is with me, my betrayer. So don't you think you know you're passing into difficult uh, part, whatever. Um, I don't know if this message is for the young ones, but if it's not for you today, it's gonna be probably remembered into your spirit for time to come. Uh, there will be this time that people will betray you in relationship or 
uh, you think you're friends and they deny you and all those things. It happened to all of us and will happen to everyone. And Jesus prophesied that the spirit of um, Judah will be more in the end time by, by much. Not to make it too long for you guys, um, we, we are in the church trying to build the church together. Well, instead of you think you're an eye and I'm in a hand or the opposite way around, you just look at that, oh, he's doing too much more than me. I'm just here observing and, and people get jealous and start to hurt each other when they are attending churches. But we are, um, if we do like our master, where is that verse? A disciple is not above his teacher and everyone is not perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So if you're really, really doing the good job for the Lord, you know what is waiting for you without really hating me. There is a cross. Jesus said, carry the cross and follow me. There is a cross on your way. That's not to scare you. That's to make you into the future for the young ones to remember that um, it happened to Jesus, to the disciple, to the people who are speaking to you right now, that betrayal is there. Is there and shouldn't be the end of the day, relationship or whatever. As long as you keep yourself from uh, sharing the truth and love, uh, speaking to people who not really um, try and try again, but when you feel like you're gonna get, get hurt in a sense. That's why the warning that Pastor Alfie start his uh, message, do not throw your pearls before the swine. Why Jesus meant by that, you know, because they're gonna hurt you. And the main things of the ministry is you yourself to be growing in God. It's not to go for salvation of others. God can save them by a way or another, but for you, you grow with God. And, and uh, not into a place that you get hurt. So you pray before you go, you ask the Holy Spirit to protect you and stand against those evil things in a calm. But when the adversity come, you know, remember uh, that we had that warning that Jesus himself said, don't waste what is holy, certain place. And when he's speaking about that, those are people trained to hurt the church, to hurt the ch children of God. It's not like a friend with you that you disagree. People who decide to get out, out of the way and out of the path of righteousness. And they are uh, um, lost and intentionally want to make people lose their uh, eternity and their life. So those are devil in a wound format. That's what he is talking about. He's not talking about, about uh, you know, uh, something which is a friend that you speak to her about speaking in tongues or uh, worshiping God or having the communion or whatever and or reading the word and they resist you, whatever. He's speaking about people who really want to kill everything coming from God. So we have to go and, and, um, and see ourselves, what are we into the scale of the path of righteousness? There is a dear friend of mine who was with us in the ministry and, uh, you know, I was just telling him, how do you see yourself? You know, you want to see yourself as a victim or, or what happened to you into the past, or you want to be a warrior and fight the devil in every path and every place. And, and, uh, and, uh, and he respond to that. He want to be a warrior. He wants to be in the place where he can really uh, help other after God recovered him. So it's choice for you. Uh, you don't have to go then dangerously hurting yourself with people who are really against the faith, but it's it's for us to evangelize in season and out of season. Father, we thank you for your word. Give us the courage, Lord, to um, listen to your word, to be faithful, to continue to work, work walk the walk. Uh, and when adversity come, Father, I pray that you guard our heart and you protect us, so we will not be destroyed by those evil power those demons who are against your body, against your children. Protect us, Father, and make us capable, seeing ourselves cast out, having ability to cast out demons. As your great commission was said, so we can cast them in the name of Jesus instead of being afraid that they can hurt us. Father, I pray that you put the courage and the trust and the strength in every head, Lord, and, and listening to my prayer, either on the internet or here, Lord, that they can see themselves, they are warriors, they're victorious, 
and they're going to preach your word until they meet you face to face. And I pray, Father, that our words will be seasoned so we can, the Holy Spirit can use the word who open the heart of people. Those ones who are an enmity against you, Lord, and against your body, we pray that they are being out of our way. Bring all who's around us, Father, the one who are uh, designed for eternal life, that we meet them into the path of righteousness and help them into their walk so that we all together rejoice in your eternity and in your presence. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.